Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media, I'm Grant Abbott and today I'm going to be texture painting a canvas tent. So this is all part of the Atlas Empires work that I'm doing at the moment. If you want to see the modelling process then follow the link in the corner now and all the links for other things that I talk about are in the description. So this canvas material is going to be quite fun. I've got to try and create a cloth like material. I've also got to try and put some patches on it. So let's see how we get on. So I'm in the texture paint workspace and I'm going to go to rendered mode. And I can't see anything because I have no lights in my scene. But if I come across to my texture, which I've already set up, if you need to see more about that, then look in the description for the quick start guide. But I can, with the Node Wrangler installed, Control Shift click on this, and that will set up a viewer node, which brings it into an emission, which is just like an emission with a strength of one. That way, it will just give me the look of the texture rather than anything to do with the lighting. So let's go to the fill brush and fill in a color. Just double check what blend type you're using, make sure it's on mix. And I'm going for a fairly pale blue, something similar to what it's got at the moment. But let's just try a few things out. Oh, I've got the wrong object selected. Let's try that again. There we go. Now that's far too bright. Somewhere around there looks good. And let's add that to our color palette. I want a tiny bit of variation in the color, so let's go to the paintbrush now. With a nice big brush on a low strength, about 0.2, let's just paint in some color variations, probably a little bit darker than that. And they're probably a bit too blobby, so I'll just smear them in a bit. But I'll smear them from the middle, and that will look like it's going down the canvas and create a kind of grain in a sense. I always like to add a bit of variation to the colors. It depends what style you're going for a lot of the time. Some people prefer just blocky colors, but like I say, I prefer a bit of variation. Okay, let's just highlight the outline for now with a screen brush, fairly bright. Let's just go around that outline. It's a bit too strong, so 0.1. So I'm trying to be fairly sketchy around here. And I'll do the same for the top. It should give it a touch of shape. Okay, it's not blending in too well, so I'll just quickly go around and blend it in by hand with the smear brush. Now this tent has a sort of two-tone color going down from the middle. So I'll put that in now. I think I'm going to go slightly darker because it's quite light at the moment, so I'm going to put in the darks. So put in a darker color. Let's just test that out. Oh, I'm still on screen, watch out for that. Okay, that's not too bad. I'll put the strength up now to about 0.3, and I'm going to change it to color. This would just add color and keep some of that variation in the tone. So it's a really useful blend mode color. You can just select a color and it will keep all those variations, like I say, in the tone, but you can then paint without having to worry, and you can experiment with different colors over the top of things. Very, very useful. Just gonna outline where these are going first. And that's why it was important to outline where they're going. So I messed up the lines, probably about there. That's a bit better. Might push the strength up now, actually. I can be relatively safe with this, because it is just changing the color. I'll push it right up, actually. Let's quickly check that I've got everything. And how's that locking? Not too bad. Might make some of them a bit wider. Okay, that's a nice start. Let's add the highlight that's going around the edge where it's propped up by the guide ropes. So bring the strength right down, change it to screen. And let's start picking up a few of these colors from my color palette. I'm going to turn on the pressure sensitivity for the radius. And after a quick restart, because my pen pressure wasn't working, we're back. After, of course, reinstalling all the Wacom drivers. That's in completely the wrong place. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'll go back to my principal BSDF, and then I can actually see where the line is. Make it a bit wobbly. And then back to the original. 
It can be handy to switch between the two modes, principled BSDF and your emission, so you can see the shape. Yes, that's working okay, but it needs a bit of work. I feel like the color needs to come down a touch, or the tone of it anyway. I'm going to go to the multiply again, go across to the blues, and I'm just going to isolate it now because the other things are getting in the way, and just gently push up from the bottom here. Might turn the strength down to 0.2. That's good. I'm going to go around the middle bit here as if there's a bit of a dip. Let's just have a quick look. Now it's looking a bit better now. Just make sure this underside has a nice deep colour. And help it to kind of curve round by using the multiply brush at the bottom here. I might have to use a bit of smearing, so I haven't been looking out for the bottom here much. Okay, that's fine. So let's start some detailed work and try and do this seam. Let's just bring everything else back to know which angle I want it from. So it needs to go up the side here. And I think in between two colors make the most sense. So again, with my multiply brush, keep it small this time and up the strength. Let's follow that down there. Might go to a darker sort of tone around the purples and things as well. You can see a few of my pixels now. And I'm going to go much darker and towards the reds a bit. Now it opens up towards the end here. I could have modelled this in, but I think I'm going to be just about okay. Then I want to highlight as if the edge of these are catching the light, so we'll go back to the screen brush. Choose one of my nice light blues. And get that highlight down there and down there. That looks fairly good as a little dent. Now we need some sort of straps across, or stitches across. And they're in a sort of yellowy, orangey colour. Fairly muted though, somewhere around there I think, and I'll put the colour right up and turn it to mix. Yep, that's fine. Now we need an outline for these, so back to the multiply brush. And this time we'll come slightly towards the reds. So in between the blues and the reds, so it's sort of multiplying both. Nice small brush. Turn the strength down a bit more. Let's just step back and see if that's working. That's looking all right. It's amazing what you can get away with with the pixels because it's really, you can see the pixels up close, but it's only a 512 texture. So all these things are on one 512 texture here. It's amazing, really. So a bit of highlights now with the screen brush. Get that blue back. Actually, no, we want the yellows, don't we? A bit more on the yellows. There we go. Just highlight the tops. And that's not looking too bad. I'm going to get a bit of cloth detail in now. I'm going to experiment just a touch. So with the multiply brush and the screen brush eventually, on a very low strength to start with. So we want to make this feel like it's flapping around a little bit, especially at these base bits. So we'll go for the screen now. So it's catching the light in different places. There we go, that's sort of working. It looks a bit mirrored there, so I'm going to use the smudge brush and just push that up a little bit. And that's working okay. Perhaps a touch more of a highlight on the top. Now 
Now this may be a tiny bit too bright. I can sort that out later when I start painting some of the other things. So the first thing I do is to find and pick a color from the top canvas and then copy that to the bottom by filling it in using the fill brush. Then I start shading across the bottom with a bit of variation and a few sort of cloth shapes. I fill in the inside with a very dark color and always shade from the bottom upwards because uh, things catch the light from the top. In this case, obviously the top is shaded by the very top of the canvas. I'm just giving it a sort of a cloth feel at the moment using the multiply brush and the screen brush. Highlighting a few areas that are going to be caught by the light. I did have a couple of references on my other screen, so just normal canvas tents. And that's where I was looking at the cloth details and things. Now you can see that it's not following the same color. So what I'm doing is going to the multiply first, just because it needed a bit of darkening. And then I just go across to the color and use the fill brush to change the color. The colors are really useful blend mode. You can just pick a color and then fill it in. And then it will sort of match up colors quite well. It takes a little bit of fiddling, of course. So here I'm doing the patch. So just fill in a color, do an outline and do a highlight. Fairly straightforward, similar to the top where we had that crease. And then doing these sort of stitches. They're quite fun really, these things. Outlining with a multiply brush and then highlighting with a screen brush. So it always follows the same sort of technique really. Then just closely looking at references, making sure that I'm happy with the shape and the feel. making sure the underside matches in with the top with a bit of shading and we're there. I thought I'd give you a time lapse of the rest as well, just in case you're interested. I forgot to uh, record for the ropes, but you can actually see across to in my UV image editor that I was painting in there because it's much easier to get the lines of the rope. So this is just a quick piece of wood or log in this case and fairly straightforward. I think I have another tutorial on that already so you can see that. I'll try and put, remember to put a card in the corner now. Same sort of techniques, highlighting, multiplying. <laughs> That's all it is really, just creating shade and the illusion of depth. Adding a few highlights, smearing if you need to, but try and avoid it as it can destroy your shape. I tried to lighten the ends a bit to try and separate the two colors in a way and give it more sort of shape and sort of dynamic feel. It's hard though without being able to paint in the shadows because it's modular I paint one and then all the others are painted without being able to put in the shadows it can get quite tough to get that idea of depth. That's why it is useful to make the ends a bit lighter so you can get that idea of the shape. Now onto the cauldron, not a black color, but a, a very dark blue color. And again, just using the multiply and screen brushes to create that shape. Not too much with the screen brush in this case because it's not a bright object. I'm using very large highlights. If you want a really shiny metal, then you use really tiny highlights and it looks like something's really glaring off the shape. But in this case, it's a very sort of matted metal. And now you can see me painting the bounce light of the fire. So that will be added as a particle effect within Unity. So you can see the results or the influence of the fire on the other objects. So I'm making them yellow in places. So to the rocky base, I've kept it sort of square rocks, as it were, rather than having round rocks because they're harder to model and more polygons, that is. And I'm filling in that sort of lightness of the fire there and then adding some shade and highlights as normal. Keeping it fairly simplistic. Because we are viewing these things from a distance, we're very close up at the moment of course, but we're unlikely to get this close as a player. There's an interesting glitch there, couldn't seem to get rid of it. 
Uh, that sometimes happens with your texture painting when you've got seams and you've got a small area. So I went into the actual UV image editor to sort of highlight that and sort it out, which uh, got far enough and close enough so I was happy. But when you are working with such low resolutions, you are going to get tiny little glitches like that, maybe areas where you see the seams. Because remember, these are all part of one big texture set. So this is only one building of 10 in a texture set that's sharing a 512 texture. So it's all very low res. So onto the axe, this is kind of fun one. Again, with this, uh, the highlights are quite sharp to make it seem shiny. So I do the general sort of shading in, make it fairly dark. This is the axe head, of course. And just highlight with very thin lines, thin as you can make anyway with the texture resolution that you've got. So all fairly straightforward still, and then just adding a bit of shading where the objects meet because there's no ambient occlusion, so I'm adding that in here. And you can start to see the set working there. So there you can see the end result. I'm very pleased with how it went. I had it in a sort of fake fire there just for the sake of rendering this out so it looks nice. For the sake of rendering here, I am using ambient occlusion but in the actual game, they won't be able to do these sort of techniques so easily. I'll be doing a few more models on this series and doing a few more time lapses. So let me know if there's anything else you want to see in the comments below. So thanks for watching and I hope this helps.